Good afternoon and welcome to the introduction of how to write an ebook. Sorry, just going to clean up my lens there. There's a little bit of uh, flaring going on. That's much better. Uh, my name is Dante St. James. We'll be taking you through this afternoon on how to write an ebook. Let's uh, share my screen and we'll get it all underway. So, as we're learning to look at what an ebook is and what an ebook isn't, you can certainly tell an ebook is not just a replication of a book that once was on a non e format and by non e format, I mean, you know, what we, what we traditionally think of as a book, what we traditionally think of as, you know, hardback paperback, all those kind of things. So we're just wanting to make sure that we understand that today we're looking at what is most precisely referred to as maybe a marketing ebook, a kind of ebook that's designed to get one sort of say simple idea across. So let's get on the way. Thanks to Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program. It's an Australian government initiative. Also, Regional Development Australia, Brisbane, and Treaty Business Consulting with Business Station Handling Western Australia. Um, all of us coming in from Brisbane and Queensland, thank you to Regional Development Australia and in the Northern Territory, Treaty Business Consulting, where I am based as well. A quote here from Professor, Professor Claire McLaughlin from Federation University, Victoria, saying it's only we oldies that call them ebooks. Kids simply call them books. And in years to come, this may be uh, the idea that carries across most of humanity as we realize that books are something we read on an electronic device, a Kindle, an iPad, something like that, rather than being something which is a physical piece of paper or something that you can pick up and open like we traditionally would a book. In fact, we'll come to a point where we may wonder why eBooks have this strange way of flipping pages when simply scrolling like we do on a phone or an iPad would actually probably be a little bit more effective. So what we're gonna cover this afternoon is what an eBook is and what an eBook isn't specifically in the format that we're looking at this afternoon. Um, there are many different kinds of eBook, but this particular one we're looking at is going to be that marketing ebook. We're going to look at why you should produce an ebook in the first place and you know why is it even worth doing. We look at the difference between both free and paid ebooks and how to decide between something like the short format or maybe long format if you want to go a little bit more into detail with things. We'll look at what distribution there is and answer some questions and probably pose some more questions as well about how to use your ebook. What are the kind of areas you'd use it in? I might even throw in a few to camera examples of what you may like to do as an ebook for your particular kind of business. My name is Don Tayson James. We'll be taking you through today and I work with Treaty Business Consulting, Google's digital springboard program, which is handling digital literacy right around Australia and the world. The boost with Facebook program for Facebook Australia and New Zealand. And my education was with the University of New South Wales, Sydney's uh, business school, as well as the Chartered Institute of Marketing. I've got many, many, many memberships. I won't go through them all right here. So what is, it, what is an actual ebook? What is it in the marketing world? And when we take the marketing world, you don't have to be a marketer to be in the marketing world. In fact, pretty much everybody who's got a website, a social media presence, a business of any kind, is these days having to be a marketer. Gone are the days where we had to rely on yellow pages, TV and radio as the place to let people know that we exist, that we're open, who we are and what we do. Now in this modern world, we're all marketers. Doesn't matter who we are or what we do. We're marketing something in some way. So now we're talking in terms of something which is telling us about an ebook as a marketer is something you can download. It can be downloaded from either your website. It might be from a social media platform where you might view it a bit later, or it could be something like, I don't know, maybe through a squeeze page or a landing page or through some publication marketplace, such as Amazon through their Kindle store or through Apple eBooks or any of the kind of book retailers that are doing something online. Now we're not necessarily looking about you writing your first ebook as a novel. We're looking at using ebooks as a marketing tool for a business you already have. Ebooks usually are quite a short format. Now we're not talking about novels again or not fiction, non-fiction uh, books where you know it's it's essentially what would be written for a regular book but converted to a digital format. 
we're talking about the marketing ebook, the thing that you can produce that helps highlight something about your business. And we'll show you very shortly some of the reasons why you might actually want to do that. Also, an ebook is something that's related to what you do. So if you're a baker, then it makes sense for you to write something about baking, your techniques, where you source ingredients, the provenance of particular kinds of flour and their various um, applications to baked goods. If you're working in the realm of health and well-being, then there's an ideal opportunity for you to write something on that particular topic, particularly in the area that you have some expertise. If you're a Bowen therapist, for instance, you wouldn't want to write about Reiki, you'd write about Bowen therapy as something which you have some expertise in, and it's also something you do every day. You're taking a peek behind the curtain for the reader of what you do every day. Now, what you do every day may not sound particularly exciting. I'm a digital marketer and I'm a presenter. Those things to me are my everyday life. They're not that particularly exciting unless I'm not me. So someone who's looking to employ someone like me, someone who's looking to contract someone like me to present something, to teach something, to get up in front of a crowd, they may be fascinated by the inside story of how I got to this place. Likewise, the story of how you got to where you're getting to and how you got to develop those techniques or those learnings or that format or that process that's your secret source about your business, that kind of stuff is what your special side is, what your special source is, or what your secret source is when it comes to what your business does. Another format that works really, really well for eBooks used as marketing material is reports and case studies. Case studies can be particularly powerful because they're usually full of facts and figures and lists and graphs and statistics. Those sort of things play out really, really well in an eBook. Whereas something just as simple blocks of text, not so much when it comes to an ebook. So these are excellent for showing examples of the work you've done before. If you're working in the marine field where you might be uh, maintaining boats, having some sort of story about a particular boat that came in and how you had to address a problem you've never addressed before, but you are now an expert in is a great way to visually tell a story about what it is you do. And you can also highlight the good work you've done with clients, not just putting in a testimonial and saying, oh, you know, working with Dante was really good because he helped us to learn something new that we didn't know before. Telling a story that comes through an ebook includes photos, includes examples. It gives you so much more scope than even you would have on a website because websites these days are all about SEO and targeting information that search engines want and loading a page as quickly as you possibly can. So bring in something beautiful like an ebook, which can be formatted and have so much beautiful stuff around it, images, flourishes, fonts, all those things that we love when we're working with the printed material. Well, then you can bring that in into an ebook and not have to be worried about, you know, clogging up a website full of very large downloadable files. So what does an ebook look like? Well, it can look like any of these really. Um, HubSpot quite often have a lot of uh, eBooks that they present in this format, like the SEO myths and the state of customer service in 2020. Now they do not print those books. These are not printable books that you can buy from a shop anywhere. These are their free eBooks. They're often in the form of a report or a list of things that you, you can learn. They're very, very educational. So someone with a very long sales cycle like HubSpot who has a free service, but really it's very limited. Once you actually become any sort of success, you'll need to pay the big money for it. With them, they can afford to produce all these as a way of showing that they know what they're talking about. They're connected in with customer service and with business. So they know that they can have a data-driven report about customer service. With the SEO myths, they know enough about SEO because they work with it every day that they are experts in it and can produce a book. An example of a local guy near me is Anthony Venus, who makes barley huts. So barley huts and those um, gazebos that in your backyard or in your pool, all that sort of stuff. Now you wouldn't think there'd be much that you could learn about in an ebook, but he came up with one called how to create a space where your family can connect. That's so simple that it's almost brilliant. What it does allow you to do is to think about the idea of having a barley hut or a gazebo in your backyard as something far greater than just a barley hut or a gazebo. He's stretching out to say, hey, if you're a family with teenage kids and they're always sitting there on these phones all the time and locked into their phones, then how can you go about reconnecting with them? He's going to a very you know, 
the, the kind of people who can afford barley huts and gazebos are usually very established families, not new young families who are still paying for baby stuff, not paying for the bills and all that and losing half an income for some, quite some time. If their mother doesn't get maternity leave, we're talking about established families that have come all their way. They own their home. They may even have an investment home. And we know that he's looking for established families because they're teenage kids in the family. It's asking specifically, are you a family with teenage kids? Well, you'll probably want to reconnect with your kids a bit better because they spend all day with their nose and their phone. So here's the idea of how you can do something at home that's going to help you to reconnect with your family in a space that's dedicated to getting yourself and your teenagers into a nice spot. Now that may or may not happen. It may or may not be true, but it's painting an infinitely more beautiful photo of why you would need a gazebo or, or a beautiful outdoor space than just simply taking photos of beautiful outdoor spaces and saying, Hey, come buy this. He's also made it really good by saying there's six steps to creating a positive family environment. He's a big family man. Um, I know him quite well and, and done a lot of work with him and helped him put together that particular ebook. So it just goes to show if a guy who makes barley huts and gazebos can make a, an ebook, and actually get tons of downloads of it, then you can too. It's not the hardest thing to do, but like everything, it does take a bit of focus and a little bit of work. Examples over on the right are from content marketing places like Rike, who's a customer relationship management system. And the other one is another HubSpot one, actually, the content marketers playbook. Playbooks and guides run really well as eBooks because they're very limited in length and they've got a very specific topic they're covering. SEO myths state of customer service, barley huts and gazebos, online marketing, lead generation. They're not very vague titles. They're all very, very specific. You will learn in six steps how to create a space where your family can connect. It may cost you $25,000 to do it with this particular kind of barley hut. But imagine what price do you put against the connection with your teenage kids who don't really talk much to you anymore? So right why even bother? Why even bother with an ebook at all? Isn't it a bit of a dumb thing? Isn't it a bit slack? Isn't it a bit naff? Well, an ebook still carries some of the, 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 the good baggage that comes with writing a book. There's organizations like Dent and a lot of um, like those big guru coaching um, kind of people who would, and, and if you want to read a book on why you should write a book, I would really suggest you pick up a thing called Key Person of Influence key person of influence. If you can find that online somewhere and buy it, it's a great book that gives you an idea of why there is such authority that comes with a published book. Now, a similar kind of authority comes with an ebook, um, but in the case, they're talking more long format and um, Daniel Priestley and um, what's his name? Glenn Carlson, who wrote that book together, who formed and still are part of the Dent movement. Um, they very, very adequately explain you know, what it is about a book that seems to give you so much more mystique. Now you think about it anywhere where you've been, you might've been to a Kerwin Ray um, or, a, or a Gary Vaynerchuk or a, you know, name the expert here. They'll always have a book stand at the back of the, of the, of the hall you're going to, or in the foyer of the convention center. There's always people selling their, their, their guide books. And quite often they've got three, four, five, 30 different books that they're selling you think, geez, they must really know their stuff. Now they may not be the leading person, the leading light or the person who knows the most, but they've understood the power of publishing, the power of presenting something. If it's a book or even an ebook, if it's a five page ebook that can be downloaded, it makes the appearance that you are much more authoritative and much more credible than people who don't. Like anyone can open a Facebook page. Anyone can build a website these days. It's not that hard, but not just anyone is going to take the time to write a book, not even an ebook that's only maybe four or five pages long. I'd really be interested to hear from you if you're, um, if you're on live right now, um, cause this is a live one, a real live one. Um, Ray, Raywin and Maggie are on the call at the moment. If either of you have picked up ebooks before, um, and what sort of topics they were about. I'd be really interested to hear because I'm a chronic downloader of eBooks. And for me, they're really about me discovering, you know, what the knowledge level is of the person who's dealing with that, especially competitors. It's great for researching competitors. It also is great for you to be able to research what trust is, what trust is in place 
that will help you to understand why I should trust this particular person with what they do, why I should think to do business with this particular person. Now, it, it comes down to the idea where you would have that ability to be able to convince someone that you are credible, to convince someone that you are the right person for the job. I'm um, just finding out here that um, uh, Madhu was saying, I download a lot for office work and genealogy. That's fantastic. And that you would do that simply because there's stuff in there that you don't know that you want to know. And that comes from you going, oh yeah, I really want to find out that piece of information that comes from someone who's a bigger expert than I am. I'm always looking for the person in the room who's way smarter than me so I can learn something from. And that's the basis of why people keep going for eBooks. From Ray, when you're saying a chronic downloader of eBooks too, I know I can't help myself. It's crazy. Um, you find books give you more in-depth info than the usual mashed up and spat out. Yeah. Now that's a really good point because quite often on a website, when you're reading a blog, it is just almost feels like the blog has been written automatically. It's the same format. It's just put out there to generate you know, search engine results. And it's not really there to go into great deal of detail to show you how to do this. And yeah, books on digital marketing are particularly great. Now it's really quite funny. I very deliberately don't write my own books on digital marketing. I write them for other people on digital marketing. Um, but most of the stuff I write are for people who don't do digital marketing. They do other things. Now, the reason why I don't do the digital marketing book thing is quite simply because I'm contracted to quite a few different people. I'm not always working from just my business. Sometimes I'm working for Facebook. Sometimes I'm working for treaty. Sometimes I'm working for a government program. So I've got to be very careful with the kind of stuff I put out there, particularly if I'm presenting something of a, of a sensitive nature to people, but I'd love to write more because I actually really enjoy the process of writing an ebook because there's a bit of a formula and we will go through that. The other reason why you want an ebook is because it helps to attract more traffic. Ebooks and the contents in them, especially if they're a PDF, are also able to be indexed by Google. So if you've got them stored in a place that Google has access to, so there's a little thing called the, um, the robots.txt file that sits on just about all websites. WordPress ones have got it. Everyone's got it. So if that, that piece of stuff is actually able to be read by Google. So it doesn't have to be open for the world to get without giving you their email address, but it does have to be available for Google to be able to scan it and get the pieces of information from it. That becomes indexable on Google, which means that you can be found for the topics and the content that's actually inside that book. So that leads to more traffic. It also gives you an opportunity to repurpose stuff you've already done. I write more blog posts than anything blog posts and scripts for um, podcasts. It's what I'm always doing. So why not bring them all into a bit of a series that forms a book? Now, quite often what I do, I did one last year and I, and I wrote the book and then I kind of put it aside and then, no, nope, I'm going to hold on to this one because we're coming into what could be a weird year because I can see there's some stuff rumbling around in November, December about some sort of pandemic starting the form. Thankfully I did it because it wasn't written for today. It was written for back then. Um, so the site that you're looking at again, um, I don't know what site I was referring to. Uh, you'll have to remind me of that Raywin. Just um, to put in there again, the site that, that what I was talking about when you're talking about a site. So I think I just went straight past all that in my head. I just skipped onto the next topic. Um, the repurposing, the refreshing of content allows you to go and refresh it. Now, if you publish an actual physical book, like this one here I'm holding. Once that's out in the world, you cannot change it. You can do updates to it, but the person who's holding this book will still have this book. They won't get the next copy of it. So that sort of thing is not where you want to, that's, that's not the kind of thing you want to get. You want to be able to have something you can update and the next person who downloads it, or you can send out a, a note to people who've already downloaded and say, Hey, I've just updated this with a brand new chapter, download the new version now just go to the same place, give them a link, all that sort of thing. You can update it and let people know it's up to date as well. So if you've got something which is all about what you do and the, so if you're a lawyer and you're talking about the legal repercussions of doing X or Y, it might be relevant in 2019 to be one thing, but the laws could change in 2020. You want to be able to let people know that and an ebook lets you do that, lets you refresh that content over and over again. Ah, oh, the site, the um, house Google scans, it's called the um, robots.txt. It's a file that's within um, most websites and it's how you can tell that it's able to read 
particular directories within a website. I think that's the one you're talking about. So on GoDaddy, if you're using a GoDaddy website, they may not have the ability to do that. But if you're using something like WordPress, there'll be a, there'll be a certain place where you store it, that the robots.txt file, so robots as in, you know, robots, I am a robot, um, .txt, and that's a particular file that says, do read this part of my website, don't read this part. So I might say, don't read the area of my website and index anything in it that is, for instance, um, my admin section. But do index the rest of the site because I want those files to be scanned. So um, if you need to know more about that, I'll just type it quickly into the uh, chat window. So you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, with a GoDaddy site, I don't think you actually get the choice of that. But if you're using WordPress on GoDaddy, you actually do have that choice because you've got a file manager to change that with. If you look up robots.txt on Google, you'll see some ideas about how that works and what it does. Writing an ebook is also very good for growing a list. And we all want to grow a list of email people, don't we? The more people we've got to email, the more ability we've got to reach people and to keep engaged with them over a period of time. And if we've got their email address, we can send them offers, we can send them updates, we can send them all that kind of stuff. I hear you on the giving up and writing your own WordPress site, Rowan. They can be, I build a lot of them. And to me, honestly, sometimes I think it'd be better off using something like Wix, where it's all in one place and it's probably easier to follow. It can be very complicated. But when we're doing an ebook, are we doing a free one or are we asking for money? It could be two ways. Um, there's certain expectations that come with a free ebook that don't come with a paid one and vice versa. So we'll take a bit of a closer look. With free ebooks, you can, you've got a lot of room to move. You can be short, it can be long, it can be a very, very comprehensive ebook like they produce at places like HubSpot, who produces a heck of a lot of excellent digital marketing material. Or it could be a short one. It could be three, four pages. I would say probably the minimum for what an ebook is would be four pages. The idea that you could print something which would be double sided. So there'd be that on the front page and then that on the back page done twice. So that to me forms something of a bookish kind of concept. Um, I wouldn't go a single page or an infographic as an ebook. Um, an infographic is a very, very different kind of thing to an ebook. And that's probably a title and a topic for how to build in an, in another webinar. I might even look at doing that one in October or November. A free ebook tends to be more informative. So it's going, here's some things you may not have given uh, thought to, you know, the 20 myths of SEO, the three things that you really should address if you want to have a good website, those kind of, here's some ideas that you may not have thought of. I'm gonna put those ideas in front of you. I'm not necessarily gonna tell you how to do them, but I'm just gonna give you those ideas anyway. They're very, what we call broad strokes. So they're very, a lot of generalizations, a lot of general information. Things that might say, if we're talking about say a website, it might be one that says, here's the three things that you need to do in order for your website to show up on Google. Number one, make sure you've got really great headings Great headings are a way to attract searches in Google because you're including the words in your headings that are going to be looked for by people when they go to Google. That's great. What we haven't done is said all the little minutia, all the little nitty gritty on what a great heading is and how to write one, how, how, how not to write a heading, uh, what the code is that you should put into your editor if there is one, if you don't have one, then how big should a heading be? We haven't gone into any of that detail. I've just said that headings are a good thing to have and to make sure that you have them so that you can show up in Google better. So very broad stroke ideas rather than very fine, fine, um, you know, fine detail. The detail comes in the paid eBooks mostly where you've got a bit more time to breathe. You've got a, a longer format. You've got more of a chapter format. So chapter one, how to write headings on WordPress. Chapter two, how to write this on how to write, um, uh, poems in haiku format. Chapter three, how to insert images into your um, Wix website text, that kind of thing, where you've got very specific stuff in very specific chapters. We're actually going to look at that because they're very, very, um, it's a big point when it comes to ebooks. It's going to be something which is not so much as insightful or informative, it's going to be more actionable. If someone's going to pay you for a book, they want to be able to read it and go, step one, how do I have a more successful life? I do it by changing my thoughts. And this is how you change your thoughts. Day one, do this. Day two, it's giving you the instructions on the how, not necessarily saying just, here's something you should do. It's saying, here's something you should do. Plus, here's 
how to do it because you're paying $30 for a book to download or to pick up from a local bookstore. You want to get some value out of that thing. Imagine if uh, Stephen King just said, you know what? A woman lived in a cabin, a guy who she really, really liked came to that cabin. She broke his knees so he couldn't get away. It was really, really full of misery. That's not a great story, but the minutiae in it, the, the story of how it built up, how the Kathy Bates character, you know, developed a very unhealthy obsession with this particular writer, how this writer got to about, got to be in that position in the first place, all the backstory, all the possible scenarios, what's going through everybody's heads as all this is happening. That stuff is so much more actionable because you're really investing yourself into it. Like same thing as if you are how to make essential oils from the ingredients that you grow in your garden. Okay. Grow ingredients, pick them, put them in a jar, fill that jar with oil and then sell it. So that's not, that's broad stroke, but detail and niche is now you need to pick botanicals that have a, have the ability to be able to be soaked in oil to extract the essence and the, and the aroma from them. Examples of the kinds of botanicals that are really good to do that are these mint, citrus use the flowers use the rind not using the juice all those kind of detailed niche things that's what you want to find in a much longer ebook think of an ebook a longer ebook as something like this it's a book that's got pages lots of pages and lots of chapters that's going to be your longer one do you have it in you to write one of those i don't know i've written a few probably about 20 of that length and then another 30 that were much shorter and to be honest, sometimes the shorter ebook is the harder one to write, not because it's uh, probably because it has less content and you have to be so much more succinct with it. And it's got such a specific thing you want to do. You don't get time to tell a story. If you're anything like me, you love words. And when you love words, you like to be able to tell a story that goes and has twists and turns and all that. Whereas a very short format ebook is going to be something which is very, very to the point and very sharp. So we're going to get underway with choosing a topic. That is step one. What are you going to actually write about? Now, believe it or not, out of everything to do with eBooks, this is the hardest thing of all to do. This is the one thing that everybody trips up on. They go, well, I don't have anything interesting in my life. What I do isn't that interesting. Anyone can Google what I do. The thing is though, that not everyone does Google what you do. And when they do Google what you do, you want to find you. And an ebook will make it more possible for someone to find you. And even if they don't find you straight away, it makes it easier for someone to refer you. Because if there's an ebook that a friend read about how to do exercise at home during a lockdown, she's more likely to send you the book. And the book has details about who the trainer is. So you can go and do details on it. You go, oh, wow, they actually do a coaching thing where I can have a daily coaching and motivation with that person too. Fantastic. Let's do that as well. So these ideas are more about you know, going beyond just a simple idea of I have nothing to talk about and going, what are the things that are fascinating about what I do, if anything? So we start off with, what do you know? What is it that you are an expert at? And you will be an expert at something. It doesn't matter what you do. So just a quick one in the chat, if you can tell me um, what your particular businesses are. So maybe the name of the business and what it is roughly in a sentence that you can put in that you actually do in that business. So for instance, my business is Territory Butchers and we sell gourmet meats in packs that are cheaper than most of our competitors, that kind of thing. If you write that on there, that'll give me an idea to say, ah, so this is what you would be an expert as, as and what you'll be able to write as. So yeah, if you can drop those in, I'd love to be able to sort of give you some tips on what it is that you actually know that I don't know. And as someone who doesn't do what you do, or maybe I do, maybe we do the same thing, you never know, um, then we're able to go, okay, right. So if that's what you do, these are the things that I would be fascinated by as someone who may read what you do. Another point would be then to be one page ahead of your customer. Now, quite often, this, I got this from teachers. My brother is a primary school teacher. And he always told me that the key to being a really effective teacher is not about what you know, it's about how you can connect with the kids. And he said, the second thing is just be a page ahead of them. Just make sure you're a chapter ahead of them in the book that you're going in. So you can answer the questions on where everything that's come up to that point, And you know, just a little bit more than they do. 
this is quite often the um, idea behind you know, professors and universities. They just happen to be a couple of pages ahead of their students. And, and I find that as a digital marketing educator as well, that in areas that I don't know a heck of a lot of because I've done you know, maybe not that much of it, then I'm able to be able to read the details of it the day before and just be a page ahead of the students. And that's quite often what people who are coming across as experts are doing. They're simply just a page ahead of you. They know a little bit more than you, that they're valuable for that and you'll be valuable for that as well. So I got Raywin saying that um, your business name is Money, Health, Money, Wealth. I like that, very, very nice. I coach people to get control of their money so they have the dollars to achieve their dreams. We may have to have a chat, Raywin. I like the behavioral aspect, showing them how their money values influence their spending behavior, you're a money coach. Now, I was just talking to someone a bit about this earlier today. I would be fascinated to know what the general behavioral aspect is you're talking about there. You like that? That is probably the area that you know the best. So what are the behavioral things that apply? Now, it's one thing for me to read an ebook and I print it out and I go, okay, so Raymond's telling me that the behavioral aspects are A, B, C, and D. That's great. I'm probably all of those. That sounds scary. Ugh. What it will be is that you can explain what those behavioral aspects are in the real world, how you've seen it either in, your, in yourself, how you've overcome those behavioral aspects yourself, or whether you've um, helped other people to come across those things and develop them even more. So you wrote an ebook on your money personality. That's fantastic. Make sure you put the link in there because I want to grab that. I actually want to look at it because I can tell you what my money personality is, really. It's wasteful, the wasteful personality. <laughs> so please share the link if you've got one. I'd really, really be interested in having a look at it, not to review it, but to maybe even use it in my life because I'm terrible with money. So that's exactly the point you're putting there. Is it worth writing an ebook? Absolutely, because I just looked at you then and went, I'm actually in the market for someone who does something similar to what you do. So it'd be really, really good for me to get in touch with you and to, I would know more about you now, but through reading an ebook, I'd understand more about the process you go through. I'd have an idea of why it is that I even need a money coach. Cause why would I need a money coach? You know, isn't that just going to cost me more money? And that whole idea that people go in thinking it's a false economy. I can read a short little um, ebook about that and go, yep. That would be amazing. And even Maggie's now saying that you would like the link as well, Rowan. So please share what you can in there. If it's a website, whatever it is, we're here to, <laughs> you might have a couple of extra people. <laughs> it's not in your site, but I'll email you. Thank you. I'm just going to copy that email address out of there into a note on my desktop. So you'll have to excuse me for a second while I do this because um, it's quite a coincidence that you're doing this because I really actually need help in that. Thank you very much. There you go. So, hey, you got this not from having an ebook, but by getting a, a webinar about an ebook. So, well done. <laughs> so, it's also about what those things are that you get asked about a lot. The kind of things that you look at and go, okay, what are the questions that come up again and again and again and again and again? It's amazing. So, it's, um, oh gosh, I've got to get the, the website now. Ray, when you're on fire. All right, gotcha. I've got that down in my, in my settings now. So what are the things you get asked about a lot? So in money, in, in money management, it could be, how do I make more money? How do I make my money go further? Um, I don't have enough money. What do I do to get more? Whatever those questions are, these can form the topic around what you're doing. In the case of you written something about being, um, having a money personality, I'd go, why? well, the question could be, you know, why, um, why do some people just seem to get the money thing and just know what to do with it. And other people just never get it through their thick skulls about how to manage their money. People like me, my family's full of money losers. So what are the personalities around? i will be absolutely fascinated to read that. So you've definitely got something there as you've suspected, because you've got a website and you've written a book that you know you're on the right path to do that. So very well done. It's definitely something you can do. In my case, I could write something about digital marketing, which would certainly be able to, take all those things that I always get. I would be getting something like, for instance, uh, the questions I'm always getting are, um, is, it really, is it really necessary to use a WordPress website? Now, the easy answer to that is, no, of course not, you can use anything. Um, but the longer answer is, uh, often comes down to personality, capability, uh, resistance to change. All these things have probably come up with you as well, Ray, when, when it comes to what is someone's money personality. 
So those things you get asked for a lot, they are a gold mine of information that everybody out there in the world is also asking. So it's not just your clients are asking, it's everybody. So we look at examples of ebook topics you might want to look at for different segments. Let's say life coaching, for example. So life coaching could be a book that starts with 10 actionable ways you can change your life right now. So the idea is that this is not something that's going to necessarily change your life because they read this short ebook, but it's something which gives them some insights. It's informative. It tickles the brain and makes you go, okay, wonder what those 10 actionable ways are. I'll have a look at that and download that, give my email address and wacko. I've got 10 actionable ways I can change my life. Now I don't necessarily have the mental and personality resources to make those changes straight away. I may need a coach to help me to make those changes. So what it becomes is a bit of a tease to, yeah, look, we know that it seems simple on page paper that these 10 things can actually change your life, but are you going to carry them out? Probably not. You're going to need someone to help guide you along that process for digital. It could be what you need to know before you choose a web designer. There's so many people that get, they ask me that all the time. What do I choose? Who do I go with? How do you know if you're being ripped off? And there's like, well, there's actually quite a formula that's quite easy to work out that I can put into an ebook that actually guides someone on what to look for when you're choosing a web designer, the questions to ask and the red flags to avoid. For retail, it could be how to choose the right dress without your best friend being there. That's actually a thing. That's actually a problem. Um, for men, it could be very much how to choose the right kind of clothes without your wife picking them for you. So it could be one of those ones where you're going, I can actually pick the, I can pick clothes myself. That would be amazing rather than having to have someone pick them for me in food and beverage world. It could be something quite you know funny. You can work with the Bogan's guide to drinking fancy coffee at fancy coffee shops. That could be a great one for you to explain what your expertise in coffee is for the everyday person. Cause let's face it just about everybody. If they really came down to it, if you're in Brisbane, you probably want to buy your coffee from Zarafas. You get it from dome in Perth. You get it from, I don't know, um, Muzz buzz up here. I think we've got a new one. It's just opened again. So all those things that come down to what it is, you know, in a format that informs people that don't know as much about this stuff as you do. We're not looking to appeal to the experts. Remember, your clients are not experts, otherwise they wouldn't need you. They, if they were experts in managing their money, then they probably wouldn't need you. If they were experts in managing um, their own website, they wouldn't need me. If they were experts in retail, they wouldn't need to download a, a book about how to choose the right clothes without the wife being present. So we look now at working with chapters, breaking up all that content. And the working with chapters really is one of the, this is the, the, the doing of the book. When we're working with chapters, we want to do it because books are quite overwhelming. I can look at this thing. It's been sitting at my desk for about a month now and I haven't even touched it. But I just keep looking at it and there's so many words, so many words. Where do I start? Well, of course you start from the beginning, but I go, you know what? It doesn't look so pretty up there on the shelf. I'm just going to leave it there for now. It's just too much for me to take in. I don't have dedicated reading time. My books are read by listening to them in the car when I'm on a long road trip down the Catherine over three hours and three hours on the way back. So you need to break that content up a bit with chapters, particularly because chapters give you a break, a very clear break. It makes it very easy to pick up again. So if you put that down, the problem with this, is you need a bookmark. So thankfully this guy is actually quite smart. He's included a bookmark, a little business card inside his book. So I can use that as a bookmark and I'll pick it up from where I left off. In an ebook, that can be a little bit difficult to do if you're not using, say, a Kindle or something like that that's going to mark those pages for you. It's a PDF. You're not going to have that ability to be able to mark it and say, oh, let's come back again. So it could be one of those really interesting things where you go, let's just name the chapters really cool names that are memorable. So I remember that it was Dear Ravenella um, as, as the as the example of the chapter, I'll remember that name and think, I have no idea what that, what that means, but I remember seeing that word. So that's what I'm going to go looking for again. It also lets you have one thing at a time, one topic at a time, one idea at a time, long, big, chunky, lots of text. They just get scanned. You know, if you've ever seen Kath Day Night in, um, in Kath and Kim, the way she speed reads, she picks up a book and just uh, basically speed reads, like scan, scan, scan. Okay, that one. Next page, scan, scan, scan. It's a very quick way. You're not actually taking in the story. You're not taking in many of the points. You're just going, what interests me? That does, and you stop there. 
but formatted paragraphs in nicely laid out and a bit of white space between them. Paragraphs get read, but long blocks of text just get scanned over and ignored. We can only take in so much information at once and the conscious brain, even though it's um, the mind is amazing, the conscious brain of what we actually want to give attention to is actually remarkably short. And in an era where we've been very much internet and mobile phone oriented means that we have very short attention spans on things like these. So once we've broken things up into chapters, we want to break the whole process of writing the book down into bite-sized pieces, which seems like a really easy thing to do, but the reality is it can be going, where do I start? What do I do first? You're not Stephen King. You're not prolific. And I'm sure he has a process that he goes through as well when he's writing books. So I would say when you want to break up those writing tasks, focus on one idea at a time. When you're going through too many ideas, trying to think too far ahead, you're going to get confused and you're going to get stuck and you're just not going to get past that first chapter. And you do that by breaking up the sections of writing into their each, into their, each of their components. So you start with your planning. You're going to plan. Don't try to do everything at once. Now this plan, write, edit format thing, I'm actually going to go into a lot more detail on the next screen with it. Don't try to do everything at once. It's like writing a blog. If you try to write a blog, come up with a, come up with a topic uh, write the topic, research it all in the one t one go, then edit it, then add and formatting to it. You're going to get stuck. It's going to become an overwhelmingly hard thing to do. Much, much easier is for you to go, today I'm going to plan my ebook. That's all I'm going to do. Plan it out. And next week I'm going to write some content of it. And then I'll write a bit more content the week after. And then when I've finally written everything down, I'm going to go and edit it. And the editing is a vital part of it to make sure you go from just a brain dump of words to something which is entertaining and engaging. And it, you don't have to be a talented writer to do these things because there's certain rules you can follow that will help you to make it a lot easier to read, even if you're someone who doesn't particularly think they're good at writing. And you want to get a proofreader at the end of it all. So you want, you're going to miss things. I do it all the time. I, so many times I send off an email that just goes out in the ether and I cannot call it back because it's already gone out there with that spelling mistake or I've misspelled someone's name with it's Tanya with a Y, not Tanya with an I. And I go, oh, they must hate that when that happens. Just like when I receive an email which calls me dainty instead of Dante, it's not that much fun for me to receive that. So getting a proofreader, someone, it doesn't, now I'm not talking about hiring a proofreader. I'm saying get another set of eyes, someone who knows you, knows a bit about your product and understands that you're probably a really crappy writer like we all are and we make mistakes and we've got fat fingers on keyboards. Get someone else to read over to get those things that you're going to miss. So we're going to start with the planning of the content. So planning the content is also broken down into a part where you go, what are the ideas that I want to share? So what is the message I want to get across in this? It could be in the case of Raywin, I want to get across the message that it's not your fault that you have this money personality, but you can do something about it. Or it could be, it's um, not your fault that you don't like the smell of orange, but I can find an essential oil that you may like. You might like lemon instead of orange. What is the idea that you want to get across here? Or if there's a few ideas, such as in my world, it could be, it's no use doing social media without some kind of web presence. And it's no use doing a web presence unless you can be found on Google. So I go, okay, those three tied together are why social SEO and your website mean the world. And that could be the, the idea that I want to get across is that they're all interrelated or interconnected. If that's what your idea is, that these things are all interrelated and all interconnected, then you know, okay, that's what I'm writing about. I'm writing a book about how social SEO and a website are all interconnected with each other. Great. Does anyone want to read it? Maybe not, but at least I have an idea of what I'm trying to write. Now, bring those three things together. I just mentioned social media, SEO, and a website. Is there a, a story that sits over the whole thing? And this is often called a story arc. It's like, for instance, um, an episode of uh, Game of Thrones can be very standalone, that there's things that happen in that particular episode, which you could come in at any point and kind of understand where you are. But we also know that Game of Thrones with a, what, a five, six, seven, eight season nightmare of a show that you had to follow from day one, 
right through the whole story to the end of it when it was all really about the story about several families and their houses. It was about the futility of war and how it destroys people's lives. There's so much there that was um, being covered, but the thing that got us really into it wasn't the each individual story. It was the overall story arc. So is there a story that connects everything through? It could be in Raywin's case that there is a story about how Raywin overcame money problems, how Joanne overcame um, being overweight and got involved to become eventually a, a health and wellness coach, how Jonathan was able to go from being someone who was not confident to be able to speak in public to well, in front of hundreds and thousands of people all in the same time. So those are, uh, there, is there a story that comes in there and it's even more powerfully, is it your story? Is it a story about you? When it's a story about you, it automatically comes across on the page as having a lot more credibility because you're not just writing about some random client that no one's ever heard of. You're not writing about a concept or an idea. You're writing about you saying, I literally sat up in tears at night because I was so scared of speaking in front of people that it was, it terrified me to the point where I didn't even want to go into work the next day because I knew I had to rent this presentation in front of three managers from my work. I was terrified of getting in front of people at all to the point of where you can go. And now I speak in front of thousands of people all around the world and it's amazing. And, and, I, and I don't even think twice about it. I've got a formula. I walk up, I introduce myself and I go boom, boom, boom. And I know I've got a crowd eating putty out of my hands. So what is your story or just what is the story that connects together those ideas that you want to share? And now we come to the point where we name those chapters. We give those ideas names. So if it's a, an idea of going from um, buying a home to renovating a home, we go into the steps. First, you buy the worst house in the best street. Step one. Step two, or chapter two, if you like, you find out what you already have the capability of doing yourself. If you know how to paint, great. If you know how to strip floors, great. If you know how to use an orbital sander, great. And then chapter four could be what you don't know how to do. And then you've got a list of the things. So that forms the chapters and the ideas. You've got one idea in each chapter. So you may have various ideas across your, your book, but when it comes to the chapters, each one of those is one individual idea that's connected by the story. The story is renovating, going from buying a house to renovating it. That's the overall story. The individual chapters are the individual things that you're going to do. When you try to get too many ideas into one chapter that's when it gets really messy and really hard to follow and people just seem to lose interest and they'll drop off of it then you actually do the writing now the writing has many many different formats you can use but one that i find is very very useful to make it very very simple is you start each chapter with a quote now you probably notice that i started this presentation with a quote i've got a very specific and very predictable webinar format that i follow it's usually Thank the people who presented it. Follow up by a really interesting quote. So if you remember back to the beginning, my quote was about how kids don't call them ebooks, they just call them books. So that was a quote that I got from a professor at Federation University. I will start all my presentations off with that. Then I'll say, this is what we're going to learn. And then we say, this is who I am. So I don't want to open up with this is who I am because let's face it, no one cares. What they do care about though is what they're going to get out of this lesson. So you'll have a very similar approach when it comes to writing content for an ebook. Start off with something that's a relevant quote or some kind of statement that could be controversial, it could be opinionated, or it could be really cute and really nice or inspiring. Whatever it is, leave yourself space to go, here's a statement I'm making. Here's a quote that I'm making. Now we go and describe or we introduce the topic in that first paragraph. You want to get straight into the meat of it. In the case of writing a blog, we would normally say, answer the question in one sentence or one paragraph at the very most. In this case, what we're doing is saying, I'm introducing what we're talking about in this idea just in one little paragraph. It's almost like a statement or a, a summary. It's a summary of everything you're about to say but in one sentence or at least a paragraph to go, here's what you really, really need to know. 
because people are going to scan through your ebook. It doesn't matter if it's even a short one. They're going to scan until they see something which they go, ah, oh, that's what I'm interested in. So if you can summarize everything that's going to be in that particular chapter in one paragraph, you're given the option to be able to scan through, get the information they need, and then get out again. And I would say use no more than three points to prove or to somehow explain or flesh out any sort of topic you're looking at. So if yeah, you're doing one topic, one idea in each chapter, then make sure that the points you make to prove it or to support what you're trying to say are no more than three. And the reason we use three is because people can remember three things. It's almost like this, um, it's a, it's a thing that we have in life. It's a principle that, that carries across a lot of what, how we learn in going to a conference. If you think of the last conference you might've gone to or seminar you've gone to gone through, if you could summarize it down to the top three points, the top three takeaways, if you like, it's a lot easier than going. Um, so there was like these 10 principles and I remember principle one was this principle two, and then I'm lost once I get past three, but three, making it simple means that people can remember each of those. We can take in those three points in a very short period of time, file those away in our brain for future reference, then get another three points, file those away in our brain for future reference. Now, once we've got all that written down, we're going to edit it. And one of the number one ways you're going to edit it is you're going to simplify. You're going to take those big technical jargony words and you're going to simplify them down. Instead of saying that the overall climactic provision for forecasting in the future, you'll go, um, the way we tell what the weather's going to be. So we're taking it down to how people talk and read. Now, unless you're doing something really, really academic where you have to use very big words because your audience is academic, um, most of you, if you're doing something that's marketing related with an ebook, they're going to do it. So it makes it really simple for people to understand, actionable, easy to remember, and you just want to get them in and get them interested. So they'll click the, the call to action button and go to your website to find out more information about how they can engage you to help them out. So just dumb, I hate saying dumb it down because you're not dumbing it down. What you're doing, you're writing for your audience. Your audience are everyday people who are out there in the suburbs um, wanting to get a better life. So treat them like that. Don't talk down to them with very high morals and high lots of words. You're not a doctor, you're not a professor, or even if you are, remember that they're not. Reduce your sentences to less than 20 words. Long, long sentences with long, long words get very hard to follow along. They're very difficult to take in all those ideas. And that's because we like to cram lots of ideas and lots of descriptions into one sentence. So if you can keep that sentence as short as possible, no more than 20 words. Trust me, it makes it so much easier. You're giving people a break as they're going along. You're not just going. And then we went down to the park where we found a swing. We went on the swing for as long as we could in the sunshine and the fresh air because kids like sunshine and fresh air. And then finally we went out to the bubble and got some water, but didn't work. So we had to go home. If you broke that up into about six different sentences, it doesn't meander. It doesn't sort of, you don't feel slow. It doesn't make you yawny and tired. It allows you to get one idea at a time and this is a principle that comes up with everything we do online on a post on facebook one idea at a time a post on instagram one idea at a time in a podcast one idea in each podcast when you try to overcomplicate it and get too smart you go too long and it becomes too hard to follow and then consider adding things like definitions if you have little pop-up bubbles that go in your in your ebooks that say hey don't understand that word is here's what it means don't understand what this brand is, here's what it means. And it shows that you're not only answering the question that probably gone their head is, I have no idea what that means. What does that mean? We had somebody asking it today in a webinar I did earlier about what spidering is. They thought it might have something to actually do with spiders, but we're talking about search engines that spider the World Wide Web to get information to bring back to the search engine. So we had to then explain that to someone who thankfully was brave enough to say that I don't know what that means, and what we did is help them to understand something far greater than they'd understood before. Finally, this is the fun part. We've done all the writing. We've done the editing now. And only now do we look at formatting. I don't want you to look at a Canva template until you've got your ideas down, you've written them and you've edited them and had it all proofread. Only then 
do you go in and start making it pretty? And when I say using a Canva template, Canva has literally hundreds of ebook templates you can use. And there's tons more out there, there's things called Contently, um, tons of different you know, ways of presenting things in a nice, attractive format. But I would say use what's free and really easy to use, and Canva is definitely the case that I use Canva to make all my presentations that you're seeing on screen right now. But when it comes to writing an ebook, you want to use something which is going to be as simple as getting the words from your Microsoft Word or wherever you've written them and copying and pasting them straight into Canva. So you've got a great looking format that's largely done for you, makes it easier for you to move things around, split things up. And what you'll notice is that those sentences, you, those paragraphs you thought were so short on Microsoft Word, when they get the Canva look really, really long and ungainly, you go, ah, so this is giving me a chance to sort of break that up a bit more with an image or an icon or maybe a little table of information, something that's going to make it a lot easier to read. By adding images in the spots where there's lots of text or some kind of figure or chart or information that's not just text, in the middle of text, it's going to break it up and make it so much easier on the eye. Eyes get tired. They really do when you're reading stuff all day. Have you ever noticed that? That when you're reading stuff, even if it's a book and you're relaxing, you get really sleepy because we're focusing on one thing for too many hours. It makes us very yawny. We start to slouch. We start to crouch. We yawn because we're not breathing right. You don't want people doing that when you're trying to get your expertise across to them into an ebook. And of course, add some calls to action in there. Have some kind of idea that says, you know what? Let's, um, if you want to know more about this, visit this website. If there's something you need to ask about this, call this number. You can have calls to action. Remember the point of what we're doing this ebook for is to give you credibility, authority, and to give people a reason to actually engage you for the service you do or to buy the thing that you sell. Great question from Raywin. What's your take on the blogs and eBooks which have one sentence in one paragraph? Well, they might as well just use dot points. I just don't see the point of going one sentence in the paragraph, then another one. It, it creates a pattern. We start to see patterns in text, you start to ignore it. So if you see, um, it's like that lorem ipsum text you might've seen sometimes on websites when, they, when they're building them, they use this Latin text and they use the same you know, paragraph over and over and over and over again. And what it does, it creates an artificial environment where the paragraphs are the same width. They look exactly the same from the one to the next to the next to the next. When we see patterns, we start to go, that can be ignored. I want to ignore that because it's just the same line, line break, line break, line break. Wherever you see patterns like that, the eye goes beyond that, looking for the break, looking for the big point. So whilst it may be an idea that yes, each sentence has one point and one idea, if you're going to do that, you might as well just do dot points, bullet points, and do it that way. At least then you've got a bit of white space at the beginning and before the text begins. So yeah, not really my favorite way of looking at it. Um, it's certainly not the way I enjoy to read something like that. And then of course, now you publish, which is done through things like Amazon and the other marketplaces through what they call the EPUB format. Now this is if you want to put it onto a marketplace where it's downloadable, it's out of your control. So it's in, like we said, Amazon, Bookstore, um, Barnes and Noble, Nook, any of those sort of digital booksellers where you can um, go in there, download it, sell it, get a cut of it, whatever it is you're going to do. That's through a particular kind of format. We're not really looking at that today. Today's ebook is more about creating something that can be shared as a PDF. So I know in Canva, when you're using that to create an ebook, you can export it as a PDF or a Adobe Acrobat file, upload it to a place on your website where it's then downloadable. Um, and you can put a paywall in front of that if you use things like you know, WooCommerce or Wix stores or Squarespace or Shopify or something like that, where you can have not just selling a product, but you're selling a downloadable product. And all those um, particular stores and plugins, no matter where you're using them. I don't know about the GoDaddy one. I know you're using GoDaddy on there. Um, but in case of WordPress, you've got WooCommerce. In case of uh, Wix, you've got Wix stores or Wix downloads. Squarespace has its own variation. That, and Shopify does have plugins that allow you to sell downloadable stuff as well. Another way to do that is through squeeze pages. Uh, well, they call it a squeeze page because I want to squeeze your email address out of you so they can send you something and keep, put you on their their their, their sales funnel. So a squeeze page is really effective way of you building your email list so you can keep in contact with that person and market to them in the future so that they may you know, do more than just download your ebook. They may then 
engage your services or buy something of more high value from you online or offline. So I'm hoping that that was enough of a guide for you to eBooks to get you really interested in it. There's so much more depth we can go into, including the kinds of eBooks to write, the psychology of how you write. We can go very deep into that. But for this is really just an introductory, a broad stroke, if you like. We talked about those earlier on how to get the whole eBook thing going. And you promote your eBook naturally through your regular channels, through your website, your email list, your Facebook, your, your, your LinkedIn, wherever it is going to take to get people interested in downloading your expertise. If you'd like to know more about eBooks or anything, please uh, get in touch with me at danteatreaty.com.au or through my Facebook or LinkedIn pages. Um, Maggie would like to have a copy of the slides. Absolutely. In fact, we'll do you one better. How about you check out the YouTube channel at Business Station. So you're just going to type in Business Station, as I'm writing in there, at YouTube. And this will be up there, I'd say, in about two days' time, where you can watch the whole thing again. Um, either which way, can I, I can't send one through here. I was going to try and send you a file. Um, no, but I've got your email addresses, so I can also send you these uh, slides as well. Actually, better still, you've got my email address on there. You can copy it from the chat window. I'm just writing it in now. Just copy this email address. Drop me an email and say, hey, can you please send me the slides from that um, from the session? And I'll send those through to you as well because, yeah, happy to share those along. Thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I really appreciate you taking the time out. We've got some more stuff coming up during the week. Um, I've got something on tomorrow night. I'm trying to remember what it is I'm doing. Um, let me see. Bring it up. I've got, uh, I've got a lot of webinars this week. So you're going to be in for a treat if you like the soothing dulcet tones that I'm putting across right now. We've got um, one on making customer quizzes and surveys, which is tomorrow evening at the same time. And then on Wednesday, we've got how to find an extra source of income. On Thursday, we're going to get it, switch it up a bit and learn more about Instagram. So there's one about how to tell your business story with Instagram. And then on Friday, we're talking about how to delegate and outsource in your business. Thank you again. And I really hope to see you later on the week. Good night.